Hello from wherever that you are joining us. It is another episode of In Conversation. Well, have you ever heard of a phrase that water is life? Today, we're going to be talking more on that from the UJ Pete's perspective. And joining me to talk more about it is Dr. Kosa. Dr. Kosa, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank, thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, no, really grateful to have you because water is life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the program manager for water quality. Um, I'd like you to introduce yourself and what you do at Pete's and, and, and a little bit elaborative manner. Sure. So... My background is I came from, uh, I come from biotechnology. So I'm an honors in biotech and my doctor degree in biomedical. <laughs> and yet I'm working engineering, right? <laughs> yes, but my focus throughout um, my postgrad and, uh, and, um, re- and postdoctoral research is, was in water. Um, so my focus has always been in water. Um, and when I apply to PITS as the program manager, it's one of the things that, you know, I look forward is something that I could give because I've always been in research, you know. And in, and in the research, um, it was always you, you're up to a point where you conduct test and analysis, yeah. but you could never do anything beyond that. Yeah. You give the report and then so what? What happens after that, you know? Um, so for me, was um, when I applied, is that Pete's was, you know, um, orientated in providing solutions. So, um, so as a program manager, they, um, you know, yes, we conduct test and analysis, and you know, develop all of these things. But uh, one of the things is providing solutions and how we can, you know, um, assist where as a client, where as a community. How do we assist them? I mean, so you have this test. This water quality test, you have that data, right? And if the quality is poor, what do you do then about it? And peace is in a position to do something about it. And there are two things that I liked from from that, of course. The first one is the interest on water that you've always had, which I would like to find out where does it come from and why water? <laughs> and then, yeah, okay, the second one, I'll ask you to answer that one. <laughs> why water? Well, yeah. Okay, let me just give you a background. Yes. Koser in Arabic is fountain found in heaven. So okay. don't ask me why. But it's always <laughs> it's in the genes. Yeah. It's in the genes. <laughs> the genes. Wow. It's in the genes. Wow. Um, so yes, I mean, I, I did my um, in-service training, but I did in bl- plant biotechnology. And I came back. Um, the, the, previously, I was a prof, Prof Yachels, uh, at the university. And I did my... Um, I approached him and I wanted to do my honors and we had to do a project. Um, so in that unit, it was the Water and Health Research Center. And I did my honors project with him. And in that, I don't know what, but I just loved the research in water. And from that, I just continued. Yeah. From, and I've been at UJ from, my, from, from undergrad, Please. from my national diploma, yeah. honors, did master's, PhD, postdoc, <laughs> and I work Your in blood stock. is orange, yeah, <laughs> literally, I think your blood is orange. That, that has been verified from undergrad. Yeah. Wow. So now, with, of course, moving from research to come into PITS and become a program manager for, for water quality, um, I'm sure you guys do amazing stuff there. As you said, uh, water testing is also part and parcel. Um, uh, at this point, I understand that PITS does not have accreditation for SA and SA. NAS, but I just want to understand how you guys are working there in terms of when that comes. Uh, take me through that process. So, yes, um, we have like the energy um, uh, focus areas. They have their own labs and the air quality, but uh, with our water labs, we don't have one currently. Um, so it depends on a client. Um, for example, you know, if, if you need, um, the client will say, no, I need water. So, for example, um, they have a borehole, but they need to supply to to the building or to the rest of the residents staying there. So for them, they're going to need accredited results. Um, so what we do is then we scope a project where we collect the water samples, but then we send it to an accredited lab. And then you get accredited data and, and you know, and then the client is happy. And then there's times where, um, where they come to us and say, you know what, I just want to test my water. I don't need accredited results, but I want it more cost effective. Then we take that, then we scope a project where we collect the water samples, but then we send the samples within UJ's lab. So we have like the Water and Health Research Center that does the microbiological testing. Then we have the chemistry department and we have Spectra that does the chemical analysis. Um, so, and then that's how we, you know, send our samples. And then we have the more specialized tests. 
that we're going into and that we're excited about is uh, the next generation sequencing. And that's where now we work with communities um, in terms of the, the river systems, you know, to track the type of bacterial pollution, um, you know, in the water. And where the normal test, like your basic test, doesn't give you that kind of information. Um, so, yes, and then those type of samples, we also we send it to an accredited lab that's outsourced. Mm, interesting. And, um, well, hearing you speak there, it, 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 for me, it gets to be interesting and amazing that at least, of course, apart from uh, clients, they're also, the community is concerned about the quality of water. Uh, how has been experienced in terms of people being concerned about water quality and are, they, are people aware in terms of water quality and you know, you'll be surprised and amazed at the, the, the you know, the numerous and, and how many NGOs and NPCs are out there that are actually working in the space. And they're working with communities and trying to, I mean, we have several projects, you know, Bosman, Riverley, Hanops, what, Lorenzville. Yes. I can name you just locally. Um, you know, the, the various projects we work with communities and that are, that are affected by the quality of water that passes their community. So, so yes, um, um, you'll be surprised and amazed at the number of people, um, you know, that's requiring water quality testing, wanting to know the type of um, water and the quality. And in some of the areas, you know, the quality is quite bad. Um, and, you know, and they're wanting to, to improve that quality and, you know, and, and some, you know, are so little in this space that they don't know who to ask for help and, where they should go to. So. Yeah, yeah, it is. Because it is, of course, a concern to public health. Water is, is very important. And could you share uh, some insights on how collaboration with Water Hygiene and Sanitation Research Center have contributed to understanding the impact of, of water? Um, so as Nikki was saying, one yeah. of her favorite projects <laughs> that you don't <laughs> want to speak one. about oh, okay. is, um, is the one in the Eastern Cape. Okay. Right? Um, I mean, you must have heard from the VC and all of um, them printing about the Eastern Cape project where um, 400 hydro panels was installed and they were um, donated by an international um, foundation. Yes. Um, and... Um, you know, and those panels were installed in the Eastern Cape in uh, two villages and two schools. Yes. And we collaborated with and uh, with Water and Health Research Center. So we got funding. So Pete's got funding from the URC, from Phoebe's department, um, to conduct research at, in Eastern Cape. So yes, source, um, you know, going is, you know, we work with communities. Yes. And so we don't want to just dump technology, you know, in communities. We also want to, you know, see the needs, the local needs. Um, and then, you know, provide a solution uh, to their needs. So the Water and Health Research Center went and conducted um, water quality testing on the source water. But not just that, they also tested um, the environmental water surrounding the area. So if the hydro panels water isn't, um, you know, um, producing for that day, then they also tested um, the other water. So the environmental water and then the water that's um, collected in the container water. So they tested that as well. Um and so that's the type of research and collaboration that, um, you know, that we conduct. So, yes, um, you know, I mean, that's one of the projects that uh, had impact, you know, public uh, on public health. Yeah, yeah. And well, when you touch on that, of course, if you're speaking as far as Eastern Cape, uh, it's amazing work that even we're not just the University of Johannesburg and Johannesburg, you know, even go across uh, the country to, to, to try and ensure um, safety or, or public health. I just want to find out also in other cases, though, um, of Water pollution, you know, water pollution is, is quite a crisis, but are we having the community at least much aware and taking care of the water themselves, or we're still having a rise in, in, in water pollution? You know, <laughs> we just had yesterday a site visit, you know, um, the Ntembisa area, and, and the gentleman, you also an NGO asking, I bet you, you didn't see this type, and we looked at him and we are like, you know, I think you like the, the fifth maybe community that we've came and did a site visit, and it's all the same. You know, the pollution coming from the stormwater or the, the, you know, the drains and also infrastructure, you know, failures and things like that, where the water, um, the, the wastewater is flowing into, um, 
into the spreads and into the, um, you know. So, and with that is um, the waste pollution, yes. you know, joining that. So, yeah, so all of these communities are having that type of issue with, yeah. with wastewater pollution, polluting the, the spreads and the, the rivers, yeah. as well as the, the waste, pollution. waste pollution. And that's, um, you know, so for us working with them, so yes, we work with the community, yeah. but what we're trying to do is... Um, you know, like we said, we install in some areas litter traps. Yes, yes. And and the way forward is to conduct like, the audit, um, the waste audit of what the litter, um, yes. you know, traps. But um, what we want to do is identify yes. these, the, the type of litter and the brands yes. so that we can engage with the companies and say, you know what, this is how much of waste was collected in these areas, yes. Yes. you know. Um, how can you engage with, with these communities in cleanups and all of those type of things? So, so that's what we're working with towards. So, yes, we do these, you know, litter trails, floating wetlands to improve the water quality. Um, but we also want to take that f further, you know, to upskill. So even if we install litter traps and floating wetlands is how can we train a community to, you know, to install this themselves? Exactly. Yes. Um, and then, um, also then, you know, try to, if we engage with the uh, with the companies, yeah. we want to try to see because we, you know, you cleaning up every hour, every week is not going to help. So we want to go further up to the and say, you know what, this is the kind of waste that you, we're finding. How can we minimize that? What yeah. kind of solution can we provide? That really becomes rooting the problem. Actually, taking out from the roots to say a collaborative effort to have measures in place to actually try and cut this. Oh, interesting and. What um, what are the key objectives driving the driving the vision of a water testing laboratory in uh, as an accredited water reference laboratory? So yeah, that was a long one. <laughs> <laughs> so as you say, you know, we're not accredited as yet, but um, but we work with accredited labs. But the vision going forward um, is, you know, I, I see. Um, next generation sequencing to be quite a part of and, and that interest in, in that type of data is being very much, uh, you know, interested. And not just by, by clients, but by communities in terms of um, what, what it can provide, that, that type of data, what it can produce. Because um, usually, I mean, there are monitoring points where, you know, department, municipalities have the, the various points on the rivers and things like that, where they just do the basic testing of microchemistry. Um, but it doesn't give you the extent of the contamination. So the you know, next generation sequencing actually gives you what is in the water. And also, you know, you can track your, your pollutants. So um, so that's, that's where we're excited about because... We've just from last just started this type of testing and we've already gained momentum and interest with this kind of testing. Um, so, you know, and also it's like one of the first for us that we can produce such data, you know, in, in Gauteng. In Gauteng. Yeah. And and it is, of course, it, it really sounds next generation. It's the next level. <laughs> it is the next a, Yeah, level. it is definitely <laughs> next level. So that's how we're we excited that we're going. That you're going. And also... Um, I want us to touch on the role uh, of cross-disciplinary collaboration. Why is that important and how is it important? Now that's very important. I think most of our projects are cross-linked. You know, um, cross um, like I said, we've worked one with Water and Health Research Center. We have various other projects as well where we were working in uh, the Club River and we work with the geography department and a professor's day from, from the ge geography and um, where they do citizen science you know, um, the type of research. Yes. And while we do the, the, the monitoring of the water quality, we have that project. Then we have um, one of the projects where we had data, we published an article in, um, in Victoria Yards. Yes. And we presented this article, and it's very technical to say, oh, so much of bacteria is found, and, you know, and this type of bacteria, and I'm not sure if you could even pronounce a bacterial organism, you know, the genus and the species. Yeah. And when we presented this, um, they said, okay, can you like just lower it to us community people? <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, so so what we did or what we're doing going forward is working with a like, graphic design oh. to do infographics of this high level data that we can present to communities, you know? Um, so that's um, um, another way. We don't just work with the scientists, but you also like work with... Uh, 
the designers. Yeah. Um, the other projects that we're working with is like the Annadale Bridge. So it's a community that wanted a bridge to be built. Um, over, um, so when it floods, you know, the community can't cross uh, that area. So we're working with industrial designers mm -hmm. and civil engineers to assist us in designing this bridge so we can present it to them so they can get that bridge built. Um, so those, yeah, those so are really big projects. <laughs> Honestly, they, they're really touching because for for you guys to from from the scientific terms and the engineering terms, but to also have visual elements that can assist the community to understand what you're presenting to them, it really goes an extra mile it, to, to to reach their level of understanding. It is. I mean, the same thing here with the Bosman community is we've got the next generation data and we've got literally one site where you have four thousand species and genus identified and how do you present that to a community so what we want to do is you know get infographics with uh, and for with the department of you know graphics and to see how we can now you know disseminate this data to not just the community but as well to you know government and an industry that's in a surrounding area how how impactful will this data be to them? Indeed, it yeah. becomes it carries more weight actually because everyone can understand it now. Even uh, coming up with solutions become a collaborative work for everyone to because we understand the problem. This can be a solution to it. <laughs> I had seen when I explained to them, actually, Shakola, they all look at me like. What are you talking about? <laughs> so when you actually bring it in down to explanation to where a community can understand, it's more impactful. Oh, indeed, indeed. <laughs> wow, wow. I, I, I'm really touched by that. Um, well, Dr. Kosa, we're almost at the end of our interview. But of course, um, I'd like you to um, speak a message of encouragement, of course, related to water quality. Um, how can the community participate? How can stakeholders participate? How can we as students, um, as a person who's watching, wh why is water important and how can they also contribute to ensuring that the quality of water is at its best? You know, um, as you said, water is life, you know, and we see our rivers being polluted, you know, and the river is, is not just, you know, where you look at it, it runs and flows. There's many activities that happens in the river, whether you have recreational, where you have kids playing in the river, or you have people, communities where, you know, they do their rituals and things like that. Um, our rivers are so, so important. One of the things that's so important is for young generation is, you know, the edu to educate ourselves, one is, you know, waste, litter. You know, it's so important. It's easy just for you to throw that litter like that, but you don't realize where that litter ends up. You know, yeah, it ends up here, but when a flood comes and everything else, where does it go? It goes down into the river, you know, and the river takes a huge beating worth the waste, you know. So so one thing is for, for, for us and, you know, as the young is to educate ourselves, throw that litter, you know, in the dustbins. Yeah, and also in terms of water quality, I mean, as I said, in 2030 to 2050, yes. you know, water will be gold. Mm. You know, you'll be fighting, there'll be wars around water. So we need to be very mindful of how we use water, how we waste water, yes. um, you know, and, and also think about going forward from now is how we can recycle your water. You know, don't think, oh, yes, we're privileged. Let's open up the tap. Let's run it for 30 seconds, five minutes. Have showers for like one hour, 45 mm -hmm. minutes. <laughs> you know, we need to be mindful of all of that. That, you know, what we waste now come generations won't have that. Um, so just to think of that. Yeah. And have that in the mindset. Mm, and true. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I'm sure whoever is listening, probably took that, must note down to say, of course, we must change our habits, of course, we have normalized things that are really dangerous for, for society at large. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me again and again. What is life? So having you makes me feel like, okay, yeah, and I'm regaining <laughs> life consciousness. <laughs> well, there you have it, dear viewers. It is. It has been another informative episode when we were talking about water quality. I got to learn a lot and learning more how to contribute in us taking care of water and ensuring that the quality is good. My name is Bongani Mnube. Thank you for tuning into this episode. The University of Johannesburg, the future reimagined.